Carrie Lake appeared on Huckabee, which is the show of Mike Huckabee, former Arkansas governor, father of Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who is now the governor of Arkansas. And uh, it was as unhinged as ever, Carrie Lake going on with all of her normal lies. And the reason why I want to watch some clips from this interview is because this still matters. And while Carrie Lake has lost, she's not going to be governor, at least as of now, unless she ran in later elections. Katie Hobbs was victorious, has become governor. And so in that sense, Carrie Lake is relevant, irrelevant. But the movement that she represents and the election denying thinking is very alive and well. If you look at polling with the Republican Party, so much of it is taken up by people who do not believe our election systems work unless their party wins, which is not a way that democracy can function. And so Carrie Lake is one of the faces of that thinking and one of the people who perpetuates those lies. And so we do have to keep up with it. First moment I want to show you from this interview, um, she's walking in, getting introduced, but then dives into the election. And I want you to take note in a few of these clips how it's so feelings based. It's so I felt like I was wrong. The election was stolen because of these reasons, not here's the evidence um, on a factual basis that made me believe the election was stolen. Uh, first moment, take a look get it but my guests do oh, they don't like me so but much. they love the people that we bring to the theater how That's many the arizonans thing. do we have out there any <laughs> we got some arizona people no ah. i see them over there you know what they're doing they're all uh, moving to tennessee i think i well i'll tell you they're what. so frustrated with this election Truly, we're all frustrated with this arizona is a red state we're a conservative state and to watch our elections be taken like this and that's why it's a strange point to start off with obviously arizona does have kind of a purple political breakdown but biden won arizona then uh, we also have mark kelly and kirsten cinema who are both well mark kelly's a democrat kirsten cinema used to be a democrat now she's independent both not republicans is my point as the senators from arizona then you have uh katie hobbs winning the gubernatorial race the secretary of state was a democrat clearly arizona has shifted, at least for the time being, in a blue direction. And uh, so that's definitely not the proof that your election was stolen, but okay. Well, I'm still fighting because I know what I saw on the campaign trail. We saw crowds like this yep. every single day and the people are so excited and we want to keep our state sane. And I ran against somebody who didn't even get out of her basement. Yeah. So we know um, funny business when we see it and that's why we're going to continue to fight it in the courts. Yeah. So. She had big crowds, similar to what Trump used to say. I had such big crowds, how could I have lost? And she knows funny business when she sees it. That's not exactly uh, the way you come to a conclusion as huge as my election was stolen from me. Here is Mike Huckabee sharing that similar sentiment of, we all thought you were going to win, so it's just shocking that you didn't. Pain, Governor, they started behaving. So I'm watching this whole race. I'm thinking, well, there's one race I'm sure of, and that's Carrie Lake is going to be governor of Arizona. And, uh, you know, we kind of go to bed that night thinking it's all going to go that way. <laughs> and so that also reminds me of the Trump response to his election of we all thought we had it in the bag. There was a lot of good numbers coming in early in the night and then big dumps, big massive dumps came in later in the night of Biden votes and that's why it was all stolen. Then you look in the details and it makes total sense. Trump fear-mongered about mail-in voting. Mail-in votes took a longer time to get counted so they got counted later on so then it shifted in a blue direction in certain areas. Not shocking, just counting the votes that should be counted that were legitimately cast. And so here with Carrie Lake, and in this case, Mike Huckabee saying, we all knew you were going to win. We just knew it. And so something had to go wrong for you to have lost. No, sometimes based on the social groups you're in or even the polling and the facts on the ground will build you up to believe something's going to happen. And then it doesn't. And that's not necessarily because it was stolen, because there was some horrible wrongdoing taking place. It might just be something unexpected happened. Guys, Trump won. A lot of people did not expect that and still respected the fact that he had won um, in that presidential election. And that's just a type of thinking that so many now within the right wing cannot accept that the person that you love, that you expected to win lost. No, 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 it had to be stolen. Uh, third moment here from this interview. 
And I just had this feeling, an uneasy feeling, and I said, God, it, it's all about you. He put me in this position, this fantastical journey he put me on. And I said, whatever has to happen, if it has to go one way or another, I know that it's in, I'm, I'm putting my life in your hand. This is all in your hands. Mm -hmm. I think more people needed to wake up to what's happening with our election. So I'm going to see this through. We'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court, and we'll see what happens. I don't want to start looking at Plan B, because once you... So you heard at the beginning there, she said, I just had this uneasy feeling referring to the election. Okay, that's not evidence. That's your feelings. Um, and then you put it in God's hands is what you're saying. And God apparently did not allow you to or sided with Katie Hobbs in that election. And because you believe that that was the plan, accept it. Unless you find evidence of wrongdoing, which you have not. Um, and that's why this is also wrong of you final moment we'll look at from this interview and you live in a border state arizona so you see a lot of the impact of people just coming across we have no idea who they are why they're here what they're going to do when they get here and so many of our problems are based on that wide open border mm -hmm. we have people being smuggled in uh, trafficked children being trafficked into god knows what we have drugs pouring in. Arizona is the fentanyl pipeline for America, and that is not something we're proud of. We've mm. got to stop that. You know, you look at what fentanyl is doing. It's and so the fentanyl point that she ended with taps on something we've talked about so, or touched on something we talked about so extensively, which is the dishonesty around the fentanyl narrative, because fentanyl is a real issue, the way that it's impacting Americans' lives, and it should be addressed and discussed but they're getting in the way of that honest discussion by saying it's all because of Biden's open border policy, which implies two things. Well, outright says that there's an open border, which there's not, and also implies that by not having a border, a lot of undocumented immigrants are able to come across and they're the ones smuggling the fentanyl. When we've talked about the vast majority of fentanyl is attempted to come across through legal ports of entry, so undocumented immigrants wouldn't be attempting to do that. That would be uh, individuals who think other than the fentanyl, they could get across legally, if that makes uh, sense. So that's just very dishonest in the way they talk about that subject, which shows they don't actually want to address fentanyl um, and the issues surrounding it. Then you get to the beginning of that clip where they're talking about just the open border and how anyone can come across freely. But what's funny is all of the, the numbers they use they cite to make the point that a lot of people are coming across illegally are detainment numbers or illegal border crossing encounter numbers. So Border Patrol is documenting how many people they come across, how many people they have encounters with, thus not feeding into the narrative that there's an open border because if there was, we wouldn't be encountering to detain undocumented, uh, undocumented immigrants coming across the southern border. And so it's all just completely confused and discombobulated in the way that they develop this narrative that undocumented immigration is the worst thing ever and we all need to be terrified by it. Instead, we should develop a legal immigration system that has the best interest of the United States, but also the individuals looking for a better life in mind and makes that process more efficient so that everybody wins, which is a process we could have that would absolutely, vastly, dramatically decrease undocumented immigration because they would pursue the legal immigration route. Um, but that is not something that Carrie Lake wants to pursue because then the political tool she has of this fear mongering would disappear.